Hey everybody, welcome back to the regular members of the RV Nerd Herd. My name is Josh, the RV Nerd, for those uh, who haven't followed along before. And it's been about two years since I got my hands on one of these 355 Eagles, and I felt high time to get you some updated footage. So if we just boil it down simply, this is the Eagle mid-bunk kind of fifth wheel floor plan. And it certainly can work for families. It can certainly work as a bunkhouse. And one of the really interesting things about it is it provides four completely separated potential sleeping spaces. You have three primary. You have your front bedroom uh, which is a queen or a king bed the queen actually gets side stands which is cool and it has stackable washer dryer prep now which is something this didn't used to have you've got the middle like room that has a flip down bunk and hide a bed sofa uh, so that could be good for uh, a, a couple kids the flip down bunk is is very small to be fair um, that could also work as a little bit of an office or a den you've got a loft attic space above it that could be a sleeper it could be storage and then of course you have a hide a bed sofa back in the living room so there are multiple different places you could sleep uh, a lot of different people very handy if maybe sometimes you have guests sometimes you don't maybe you've got uh you know boys and girls young boys and girls and you don't want them necessarily uh you know bunking up together something like that this is a model that can work for a lot of those purposes but what's cool about it is it could work for a family right now but as the kids grow up and move on you don't necessarily need to like replace your fifth wheel with this one the way that you would so many. It's kind of like a pair of shoes that you can grow into because that middle room can just be repurposed. The, the loft bunk can just be repurposed. It could be attic storage. It could be uh, cat uh, you know, spaces or something like that. A lot of different ways you could use this floor plan. And this thing is packed full of Jayco Do and Jayco things. And they have continued to do a lot of stuff that a lot of other brands have scaled back on and stopped doing. But it's also got a couple things that might be potential problematic deal breakers for you. And I want to share the good with the bad with the ugly with everything else in between as we go today. So uh, let me know what you think about her. Hit that subscribe button if you like how we do this. Let's get started. And I'm going to try to keep this moving along. I know my videos run long, but Eagle has a lot to talk about. Now, I, I will tell you, this is something I've actually flip-flopped on quite a bit uh, over the recent years. I, I have really come to kind of prefer just physical switches versus all the Bluetooth R2 beep boop kind of stuff. But I do like the BM Pro system because it does still allow me direct access buttons to things like awnings, slides, uh, lights. Main everyday use functions are right there. You don't necessarily have to go Bluetooth with them. Now, the, uh, the, the decor here, obviously, lighter and brighter. Now, the furniture looks almost graphite black, and that's a result of the sunshine barreling in through that. You'll actually, like, the furniture and the woodwork will, uh, will almost look like the color changes depending on how close or how far I get from it with the camera that I'm using. Now, something Jayco has maintained the use of that a lot of other brands have quit doing is their whisper-ducted air system. Basically, they're, they have a, a, a baffling system to knock down a ton of the noise of the air conditioner. And um, I think Eagle was the first in this class and category to standardize dual 15,000 BTU dual whisper air. So some brands, they might give it that treatment in the living room, but not the bedroom where you're right up next to it. So it kicks on and the compressor roars like Katy Perry. Well, that's not the case of what happens here. Now let's rip some band-aids off because if these are deal breakers, I hope you respect the fact I want to find out first. Eagle uses floor vented heating. Jayco has maintained a lot of use of that because it is a more effective heating system and it helps heat the floor. So if you actually are going to cold camp, it is a superior system. But if you're not going to cold camp, maybe it's not right for you. And the kitchen slide, at least at the time of this filming, who knows what the future might bring, the kitchen slide is a little bit of a toe stubber. If those things are deal breaker factors for you, I respect it. There are certainly other things like whether it's, uh, you know, Grand Design, uh, say like Reflection, your uh, Brinkley 3610, some other things with a similar layout that won't have those kind of features. One of the other things that's really nice about this is it puts the windows over here on the campsite of your RV so that you're enjoying your site and not necessarily just the neighbors. The other thing is if you look at how much seating is in here, the irony in the RV industry is that typically the RVs that sleep the most people seat the fewest people. And that is not a deficiency that this floor plan has. That's one of the cool benefits of these like middle bunk bonus rooms is they actually can seat as many people as they sleep typically or darn close to it, you know. Not to mention you've got multifunction middle den rooms that could uh, offer like seating and sleeping as well. Now you've got the, the nice side stands on either side of the sofa there. 
Uh, and I love the location of the household uh, and USB outlets. I, I think that they're right where you, generally speaking, want them. And notice how all the windows open for airflow. They've done a very good job of that here, making sure the air can really kind of, uh, you know, float around and be comfortable. When you are at the theater seat, this is definitely boardwalk and park place for the Max L tapes kind of viewing experience. Remember that old commercial where the dude was getting blown away by the stereo system and his butler's like, the usual, sir. Uh, we've got the Tootsie Toaster down below. And you might notice the JBL sound system. Uh, they've uh, put a little money into making that uh, a little bit better sounding kind of thing. Now, there is storage behind that TV. It's a mini pantry tainment center, or my grandpa uh, would have called it his Baptist medicine cabinet. Um, because he always had a little bit of hooch stored somewhere in the RV. Him and my grandmother had this really cute system. He would pretend to hide it like he wasn't taking a sip on something on a chilly spring or fall evening or morning. And my grandmother would pretend she didn't know it was there. It was a, uh, it was a really sweet system that they had developed. And I believe that is maybe one of the keys to a healthy, long-lasting marriage. And they, they made it. They made it all the way, those two. So I'm, I'm, uh, it, there must be something to it. So I guess, I don't know, hide some liquor behind your TV if you want your marriage to stay together. I'm not sure what I'm saying, but eh, there you go. Smart TV, by the way. Smarter than a fifth grader. Now, this RV potentially has two pantries. If I pan back here a little bit, I don't know if I'm actually using that term correctly. Um, You've got the normal vertical pantry on the left for the kitchen, but then right next to the entry, you've got that whole wall of storage, which can be um, a pantry or a closet because it has what's called a Mervin shelf. You'll see me flip that off later in the video. Well, mm. <laughs> nope, not flip it off. You'll see me flip that later in the video. <gasps> oh no, I just noticed something I don't like. I will double check when we close the slides. I think that converter might be blocked by the living room super slide. I'll have to take another look at that. Um, I may have an idea of how Jayco could potentially avoid that. Uh, we'll get there later. Um, this RV has a drinking water system. When I open all the storage in a few minutes, you're gonna see what looks like a Culligan jug under the, uh, the, the sink. Well, you flip this little switch down here and that little guy suddenly becomes its own freshwater, you know, dedicated, Kind of because this refrigerator doesn't have a you know a water dispenser. Basically, the RV has one built in, which I think is an interesting workaround. That is a 12 volt DC compressor fridge, by the way. And look at this; they went straight like uh, you know GE microwave. They went GE uh, oven, um, and that is a large and in charge oven. That is Charles in charge kind of oven right there of our days and our nights. Anybody, anybody remember that show? Anyway, entry door has a full window, doesn't include a factory privacy shade. It's not hard to add, it would be nice. Now this thing right here, I uh, this is kind of the, uh, it's a bit of a dinesque. It's a dining table, desk, wombo combo, and it can do a couple interesting, interesting things. One of the nice things though, is they maximize the windows around it to really give it nice big looks and feels. Um, but, uh, if we take a look at all the different functions of this sucker, first of all, um, the, uh, the, the, the table can extend and it does come with a pair of fold away guest chairs. So if you do want to wrap four people around it very comfortably, you can by default, it's a great two person diner, but it can rotate very easily and lock in place 90 degrees. And when it rotates, it locks also in place. So it's very stable. Not every one of these dinesque things in the RV industry is really sturdy when you rotate it. This one is. So if you don't need dedicated dining space, like if you just tend to eat off a dinner plate off your lap, which is what I tend to do quite a bit, um, this could work for you. So I'm going to call it like your home away from home office. Although this RV with the middle bunk bonus room, in a sense, kind of has another way that you could accomplish that same thing. Now, one of the cool things on these um, is that you'll see a lot of power outlets that are very easy to reach. And a lot of them have this little white sticker on it. If you get up close and personal to that, um, you will notice that it actually has uh, a little sticker indicating that it's inverter prepped. There's a lot of inverter prep that goes into this. The base version of an Eagle is inverter prepped only. When you get the more advanced solar packages, or if you choose to add an inverter, a bunch of different outlets in this thing could be live powered off batteries. So if you are going to do some Walmart parking lot boondocking off grid kind of functionality, this is potentially something that could work for you. Now, uh, it's, you know, your generically sized sleeper sofa on the back. Uh, you do have a wall hugger theater recliner over there. And a lot of people ask, where can I get those little swivel stands for the recliners? 
I don't know if Jayco has some kind of exclusivity or patent pending or what, but basically they seem to pretty much be a Jayco thing. Any other manufacturer that's using them is, is kind of getting them through Jayco, and that's exactly what we can do. If you want a set of those, call our parts team, and we can get you a set of those little swivel armrest uh mini table kind of solutions uh right there you obviously probably noticed but it's worth mentioning they are not doing any carpeted walkable flooring in these up in the bedroom around some structural stuff you will see a little bit of carpet mostly out of the way but nothing that you're going to walk on all of your walkable spaces on these are carpetless and i do like how the slide floor in the main floor matchy match i think it just gives it a uh, a very nice good look here now one other thing to mention because that tv could pivot it could also pivot back to face the uh uh you know like entertainment center and again push button easy on off solution here although if you want to you can still individually switch on lights and all these different light fixtures they do have dimmable functions on those and you can do that right from your phone if you do want to get the uh the fancy pants app now i shot myself in the foot trying to conserve battery power here I, uh, I didn't turn on the lights. Let me fix that. You may have also noticed how that bunk suddenly magically changed. Jayco's very cool and consistent about their bunk ratings. Any single bunk like this will be 300 pound rated. Any double bunk will be 600 pound rated. And if you notice, they have this handy little move bunk, get out the way, easy catch and latch system. Now the upper bunk uh, is on a bit of an angle when you do that, but I've as tall as I am, I've sat at that sofa and I don't have an issue. And this is what's kind of cool about these RVs is that this model can be a family model and it can work very, very well. But if you need a daytime den kind of space or, or an office, well, it could do that too. Or what if it's a, a, a rainy day or something like that? Well, obviously, you know, you've got your... Um, you know, all your sleeping space, but it can convert in a sense into a second living room. And then straight across from it, we have, uh, you know, the, uh, the handy storage space right here and potentially desk space. So this is dresser space, desk space. It's a couple different things depending on what you want to do with it. But you may have noticed how the overhead, uh, cabinets there, those were not strutted. Those were not self-supporting. So it just depends on what you want to do. Now that little shelf right there, that is deep enough for a laptop. I don't know that you, I don't think you're going to have room for a laptop and a keyboard, but you would definitely have a jumbotron of a monitor potentially right in front of you right there. And I like that indirect light above those cabinets. One, it just helps the whole room open up. But two, uh, it, it could act like a little bit of a uh, stay away monster kind of light because all I know is that sometimes when the lights go out, I get a scared. Um, <laughs> and in case you're curious, yes, you have a heat vent in the floor here into the uh, the middle room and you do have a uh, air conditioning vent ducting air down into this room because otherwise with this having no peekaboo door you know where you can see over the top of it it would be a uh, a bit of a trick now working our way around here um i prefer it when the steps to the uh upper bunk are on the upper deck because it's a shorter ladder for the kids however if you look at this the ladder does open uh, a, a fair way right into the hallway so you're going to want to be kind of conscious of that at night. You know those little stick-on LED lights? I would probably slap a stick-on motion LED light right over here just so I could better see what I was doing around the stairs. That would that would be something that I would do myself. I will also say these are not really barefoot friendly. Now up here, this is, uh, you know, you're going to call it a loft bunk, but um, I bet if we did some polling and... Anybody who owns a middle bunk bonus room floor plan, leave us some comments, please. Do you use this for storage or sleeping? And I bet more people use it for storage than anything else. Um, they are using two individual bunk mats up here. This is going to be 600 pound sleeper rated. Obviously you could use this for cargo. So if you get these out of the way, you actually have some decent cargo headroom. But I could, I've seen people say, well, that's my little cat haven. I put my, you know, various things up there for the kitty. Um, yeah, I could see that working. You know, obviously the cat's got to get it up here at some point, but uh, cats are generally pretty good at getting up and into things, especially when you don't want them to. Now, they are still doing their backlit morning mirror. Nope, wrong light. Sorry about that. Backlit morning mirror. Nailed it. First try. And then, of course, we have our main ceiling lights. They got rid of the little bat blue light for nighttime use in here. 
Um, I think that it might have been something that was potentially irritating some folks' eyes. I'm not sure. Um, the uh, th This bathroom arrangement has become like the default bathroom arrangement in, in fifth wheel RVing. And I... I think for good reason, because it, it just generally does the trick and it does it very well. Now, they do a true pocket door over on the left for privacy, um, which means they have a dedicated space for the old butt neck can roller right next to you right there. And they do a heat vent in the wall in the bathroom so you don't have vents in the floor by the toilet, which is very good in case you're playing the Game of Thrones and encounter some Peter Sprinklage. <clears throat> um, hopefully you get the joke there great space around that toilet. That is, I think, what I would refer to as fairly fluffy friendly. And I like how they're doing a door for the bedroom storage. And look at all the different shelving. Instead of just super tall, wasted space, they're really using that space very, very effectively. And I don't know what it is. A couple years ago, Eagles, um, I was having a hard time fitting into the shower of them. I'm guessing they uh, changed their profile a little bit and they might have actually gone a little bit taller in here because I am a little bit over six foot and suddenly found myself very easily capable of uh, fitting in the shower there. Now, there's only one little tweak I would suggest personally in this bathroom. I did just notice they moved away from that navel blue uh, in the lower bathroom cabinet and they stuck with the farmhouse white all the way through. But um, they put shelving down there, which is great. But I think that with the um, linen space cabinet, we already have enough shelving. I would like a wastebasket space under that sink, personally. But what is your take on that? Do you like what they did? Or should they like open one side of that up under the uh, the, the sink to, to give us some uh, wastebasket area? Now, obviously, we've got the, uh, you know, a full-on privacy wall here. And one of the things that I haven't mentioned so far is the context sensitivity of the BM Pro system. So you may have noticed what looks like a little remote control on the wall uh, like that down in the living room. And you'll see one actually in the bedroom headboard and then another one over here. They all do a little different thing depending on where you are in the RV. And they're little miniature versions of the big control panel that we have uh, you know, in the main hallway. So you still have switches, which is nice. You don't have to Bluetooth everything. FBI listening device, by the way, also known as a thermistor. It is checking the temperature in the RV, telling the uh, unit if it needs to kick on the furnace or the air or whatever. Now, both sides of the bed have um, inverter prepped household outlets. And I want to tell you, they have not done the cheapest backbreaker death wafer they possibly could here from the factory level. We are looking at the 70 by 80 King option. You might notice how the decking, I purposely left it sticking out a little bit to be easier to see. The decking sticks out further. So the bed base and storage under it is queen size. And if you get the factory queen, you actually get some really nice side stands built right in the slide box. I almost kind of prefer the queen in these, but Kings really still become very popular. But what I was getting at, that mattress is not the worst. Like, before I just auto-pitched it, I might try to use it or put a little foam top around it or something uh, a couple times. That's that's just me, though. Um, let's get that bed up and take a look at all the storage in here. One of the other neat things is that this does have uh, that full front closet, but it also has uh, basically, like, side-by-side -side washer-dryer prep, which is kind of cool. Now, um, when we flip back into main video mode, if you're light sensitive, you might want to look away. I don't know what's going on, but my camera's flickering. Usually that means that the dimmer switch here uh, in the bedroom is down a little bit. My camera does this weird wavy bar thing on the screen when that's happening. So before I go giving you a migraine, I said, look how flipping tall that dresser is. Holy cow. I'm going to bop this thing into road mode and fix the lighting. All right, now road mode here. That uh, that 80 inch long residential length bed comes right up to that dresser, but it's not smashing anything, so I feel pretty good about that. Uh, bathroom lights are off currently. I'm operating on some very limited battery power right now. Um, I I I got called away from recording this video. Not that you can tell that while I'm recording this, but I accidentally left my battery on with all the lights screaming. And although this RV does have a 200 watt solar panel that's not necessarily enough to leave everything running especially when i accidentally left the 12 volt fridge running so going down the road you know you can get up into the front bedroom but i don't think that slide system a schwintech slide system is rated for you to occupy it while it's retracted the thing is this giant rv is really made for being there it's far less 
functional for getting there. Um, you know, it, what, one thing that is nice is you can leave this middle bonus room door open and still close the slide. Some of them you'll actually crush the slide fascia or the door or something. But as I mentioned earlier, when the uh, super slide over here closes, it could be a little bit problematic um, potentially, you know, I don't think, I don't think you can squeeze your way through here. And if you blew a fuse, I think you might be able to reach through there and get to that, but man, that's not easy. And I have no idea when this video is going to release. Probably if I had to guess sometime in June, but at the time I'm recording this, it's sometime in April and we're getting ready for our big annual open house here at my Coldwater, Michigan hometown store. And sorry, I just, I saw something shiny, which is actually more related to what we're accomplishing today. Look at the size of this front awning. Like, holy crap, man, Gall the Batman. That is, uh, it's even got a center support on it. Now, here, I'm gonna teach you how to fish on something. If you like these tips, I don't know, hit the like button, or don't, I can't tell you what to do. When you see an awning that has a center arm support, like one of the nice things about awning is being able to sit outside when it's a light drizzly day, but if the awning is actually big enough to have a center support, um, the fabric can bow down enough that the water won't always properly run off. So on any sort of rainy day, if you have an awning with a center support, it really is best practice to put that sucker away. Now, just because of how we're parked next to this wildwood next to us here, uh, next to us, next to us, I'm saying that too many times. Let's start at the, uh, the slide out. First of all, windows on the campsite where I think you want them. We've got the second awning mounted right on the slide. You see the two plus three sticker there indicating Jayco's warranty. They've got about double the warranty of most brands. Some brands uh, will put a big three on the window or something like that. That's a three-year structural. Jayco has a three-year structural. They also have two years of warranty instead of one. So it's just some of those extra things that they're doing. They have a good focus on tires, uh, reliability, and running gear down here. Like you've got your Moride CRE 3000 rubber shock dampening system, the 87 mile an hour rated uh, Goodyear tires. Um, like a lot of brands, they've swapped over from the old style fold over handle to the fold down handle so that the handle can't be folded over the door, which is probably why they call it the safety rail system. Now she's prepped and ready for a full like backup camera and observation suite, but you see another camera above the door, which could act as something of a security monitor. Uh, I I can't remember. I think we kind of talked about that a little bit uh, up in the bedroom. Now, uh, that's a quad step, the stable step variety. And as we pivot around a couple things, um, Eagle's done this for years. They mount their speakers down low, but you might only note it. Like, you, you see how it's only a single speaker. This is a new JBL sound system where it actually does have a left and right element, but it's fr broadcasting from a centralized location. Um, I'm not a big fan of outside speakers, although I have long liked how Eagle does it. They mount the speakers in the skirt so that there's not wiring going through the walls. Um, there's not potential leak points in the walls. If you're going to do outside speakers, that to me is the way to do it. Now, this has gone through a couple different variations and iterations over time. Um, if we want to call it a camp kitchen, if we want to call it something else, whatever you want to call it, uh, this used to have like a little wet bar. It used to have like a little sink built right in here. And what they've all, they kind of changed it into is like a little bit of a charging station. Now we do still have hot, cold outside utility water here with that little garden sprayer hose hookup, but they've expanded on what they're doing with their J port system. And I, I'll, I'll tell you, I got to love hate on this. Like I, I try not to be a person who's always like everything I look at is the greatest and the best to me. That's really stupid and insincere. There's cool things about a lot of RVs, certainly. I do tend to be pretty positive, but um, they they let you kind of pick the cooker you want. Some, you know, a lot of factory supplied cooking solutions aren't always great. Now, you know, you can certainly get like a, a griddle type thing from Jayco, or you can, it, it's not hard bolted onto the RV though. If you want to replace that with a Blackstone, or if you just don't want it. If you just want a handy little outside prep space here, that can work for you. Now, in a sense, it does still have a sink, but it obviously isn't plumbed into anything. You're gonna have to kind of catch that gray water and dispose of it properly. And you really shouldn't just be flipping gray water on the ground at a lot of places. Uh, a lot of facilities don't appreciate that. And I, I'm, that's not a criticism, I, I certainly understand. Magnet holdbacks, slam latches, pretty common fare for big fifth wheels nowadays. Um, the the pass-through on this, it's not a drop frame, but man, it is still pretty aggressive and serious. You got your outside TV hookups there, and in case you're curious, they actually do let you run uh, your, your power and TV cables 
um, through a skirt, basically through the little ABS uh, side saddle bucket right there, so that you're not, um, you know, you don't have to leave the baggage door open necessarily all the time. Now, if I get down here low, take a look at the top of the pass through. That is your bedroom bathroom floor decking right there. A lot of brands you see raw wood. Um, some brands, if you're lucky, you see what I call hot dog paper, where it's a single layer foil. Jago has, for geez, so many years, used the double sided radiant barrier layering, whether it's the belly, the nose, the roof, or the entirety of the upper deck to give you a little more thermal consistency on these. And I am liking the look of these. Um, it, to me, it looks sharp. I like how they're, they've moved away from like the Nike Adidas uh, swoosh style things. Now there's an interesting thing with Eagles. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called like their dry camp package or something, but you can get this generator prepped. And when you do that, your 30 pound propane tanks will actually jump up to 40s. So you can get up to 40 pounds of propane, or pardon me, 80 pounds of propane on this. Um, and you can get it gen prepped, but they don't actually offer a generator on eagles um they just they haven't i've always been a little bit surprised by that but if because the thing with an eagle if you really look at this it does a lot of the really important stuff that a uh, a higher dollar thing like a north point does but it does it a little bit smaller lighter and a chunk less money i'm not saying they're equivalent products but there's certainly some overlap on a venn diagram right there and um you know, if you look at this, you're like, man, I, I think I could get by with that Eagle. Well, you know, I, I'm not sure you're necessarily wrong, but you're like, nope, I got to have a generator. Well, Eagle can do it. That's my point. Uh, we do have a stinky, slinky sewer tube down here. Underbellies and uh, forced air heated, insulated, and closed, obviously. I think I already mentioned the radiant barrier. You may have noticed the tankless on-demand water heater. This is one of the few black eyes I personally find with this floor plan. Um... It, uh, it, it is a single-headed sewer monster, so it's not the multi-headed poop hydra, but the one outlet location is actually buried under a slide. However, if you're at a, a site that has on-site sewer and you get that hooked up before you open your slide, all of your... Sorry, let me get back up here. Because you may have noticed there was a blade valve at the end of that thing. That's kind of like one of those handy Valterra valves. All of your actual dump gate valves are right there. You just have an extra cutoff at the termination point, which can be really handy um, at the uh, you know the sewer station potentially. So um, you can leave it hooked up and then still pull your gate valves. You don't have to climb under a slide to get to those. I think that's a really, really, really important distinction. Um, working our way around, basically every window you see opens for airflow. Except I think the only window on this that doesn't open for airflow is just the window. Um, in the entry door. We've also got a 3,000 pound towing hitch back here with a uh, 300 pound vertical limit, safety chain hooks, and a four-way wiring harness. But one of the cool things Jayco does, like a lot of RVs um, do uh, plywood floor decking. A lot are still doing OSB floor decking, and there actually are benefits to certain types of OSB and floor decking, but something almost nobody's doing is plywood roofing. The, they call it their Magnum Truss roof system, but one of the aspects of it, and there's a lot of things that go into it, is the fact that it's plywood roof decking, and it's rated to hold more weight as a result. Now, if the roof is rated to hold more weight, a major chunk of the structure is rated to handle more stress, and I think that's a really important thing for long-term ownership. Now, they've had an optional solar package for a while. Uh, I believe the 200 watt Overlander one solar package is now standard, but they do have some greater solar packages available as options right from the factory. Or you uh, you call our team back here in the shop and we can pretty much DIY about anything, well, that you're willing to pay for, I think is a fair way of saying it. And I don't know if you caught it in the background or just on camera as we were moving around. Your leveling system on this is a six point. It is an electric, but it is a six point leveling system. And uh, your slide outs, your bedroom slide is a Schwintech. Uh, basically everything else uh, they have since updated to be rack and pinion. There were some Eagle floor plans that could potentially have three different slide systems on them. And they've tried to kind of be a little more consistent in that regard. Uh, also understanding that a lot of people prefer rack and pinion slides uh, because they tend to hold big heavy weights really well. So they're gravitating toward that as I think they should. I like that they're doing that. Now, if you like what you see, or if you want to see what else might be out there, it's a little bit similar. Take a look at the links in the video description, check pricing and availability on this, or see other similar models. And until next time, let me know what you think. And thanks again for tuning in. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.